sit back, strap in, and get ready for After Hours with TC Rastani. This is Abigail Harwich, executive producer, welcoming you to the show. And now, TC Rastani! Alrighty, welcome to the After Hours of T.C. Rustani, the podcast. I am T.C. Rustani here, emanating from the palatial podcast penthouse with my esteemed panel of experts. And it is a somber moment mm. down here on uh, with Rustani Productions. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no one has passed away. We're not going to say that or anything like that. But one of our beloved shows that mm. was like, it uh, wasn't really a Rustani production, but it was affiliated with Rustani Productions. 100%. 100%. 100%. It was uh, Ricky Bittman's jukebox exclusively on spotify ran 70 what eight? 73 episodes. 73 five seasons five seasons 73 episodes and uh got the plug pull on it by spotify yeah not just my show but anyone that uses the spotify for podcasters uh app app i guess you'd call it yeah to support the recording and the making of these episodes they just discontinued that model or, or, or platform. Uh, no, you were talking about this in a previous episode. You had big news and big news. Yeah, yeah. You didn't want to let the cat out of the bag. Well, you know, I didn't because I think when you say, well, you know, the show's coming to an end, then people just stop listening. Well, that, and then you get pressure to come up with ideas. There was too long of a gap. I mean, you got to figure. The last show I made before the last one I just recorded was March 28th. Oh. So I was dead for the whole month of April and all of May. Wow. Most of May, anyway. Well, it's somber, but in a way, the good news is I asked you off air that Spotify will not be deleting the archived episodes. No, the library will always be there. So you have 73 unbelievable episodes. Mm -hmm. For those new people who have never listened to it, you have 73 awesome episodes yeah. of Ricky Bittman's Jukebox to learn about history of music from weird songs uh -huh. that you thought you'd never hear. Absolutely, absolutely. I loved your uh, your show, and I'm not just saying that because you're here. No, I, I get it. I, under I love the... Uh, the uh, the stuff you talked about in the wraparounds in between the songs. Yeah, there was a lot of that. The history and, of yeah, this stuff. The yeah. you know the little you know potpourri of yeah. trivia yeah. that you gave out there. You did your research on these yeah. shows, and it was it was commendable. It was an unbelievable show. Well, I, I hopefully it. somewhere down the line you'll do a show something similar to that. I, I would love to. Now and this is kind of this breaking news. Do -do 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 saving us right for the air. So good buddy of mine, Tony Carl, who wrote the Bitman theme song. Well, didn't write it, but adapted it from the Batman theme song. He has a connection with a buddy of his who has a once a month show on Stephen Van Zant's Network. serious, serious channel. This is serious stuff. Yeah, exactly. So he says, I'm going to get you the contact information. So I figure, what the hell have I got to lose? Nothing. I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm sure that pays absolutely nothing. Who but cares? you have a once a month there could be a Ricky Bimmer's jukebox on Sirius Satellite Radio. Be Every new car would get the episode. Unbelievable. But I'm, I really, I'm not going to hang my hat on that, but it is nice that Tony Carl did that. Big shout out to Tony. You know, it's like Doc always saying, if you can put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. It's 100% right. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. It's getting harder and harder to, uh, to do a good episode of Clouded Conversations these days with YouTube and everything. Right. Breathing down my yeah. throat, telling me what music I can use right. and what it's, themes it's, I it's, can't use. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you just got to keep your mouth shut and play by their rules and yeah. everything. I mean, you know, they can be uh, bastards, but you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to cheese them off you because don't, they, they'll take them, uh, they'll take everything from you. And that was the beauty of the app. I could use all of Spotify's library. So any song you wanted to use, as long as Spotify had it, you could use it. Now, a couple of times I did some interviews with people. I had recorded interviews from uh, YouTube. Right. But there was a song playing in the background. They're like, we heard the song. You can't oh, do yeah, it. Yeah, the algorithm heard it. Exactly. It's so amazing. that's why you're going to yeah. be in a soundproof studio yeah. so you have nothing playing. Yeah, so I'm, I got, I'm, I, Idle Hands are the, are the devil's workshop. So you ever I, see that movie, Idle Hands? No, but I went to the Idle Hands Brewery down in Malden. Oh, okay. Uh, I seen it. It was with uh, like that Seth Green kid, and there was like a like a the, he's a pervert. Like, yeah, well, like uh, Are you well, sure? I, I I enjoy his <laughs> robot chicken stuff, but uh, l like uh, yeah, it's about uh, like a, a severed hand that comes to life and everything and starts tra harassing people, which is a remake of uh. Uh, uh, that that old Michael Caine movie, The Hand. Oh, that's right. The yeah, hand. yeah. They're like uh, I think that was Oliver Stone's first movie or something like that. Well, the best thing about the movie Idle Hands, you know who Kelly Monaco is? 
Sounds familiar. Kelly Monaco Sounds was a, hot. Was a she... Playboy playmate okay. in 1996 who later went on to be on soap operas like General Hospital, and she won Dancing with the Stars. Well, look. this is prior to that. Well, she was in a car in, a, in Kiss makeup, okay. and the hand just starts feeling her out. Nice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The it, great scene. It, you get to see it all. She's gorgeous. She's my third favorite Playboy oh, playmate. Oh, okay. Well, now, oh, jeez. She's unbelievable. I can see why you like her. Right, right. Little, a little tiny Italian yeah, girl. She falls. I like to see people who all people who search for these other people. I don't know any of them. I don't know, care about anybody else. It's, it's just funny that they would associate these people. No, I don't know who they are. Yeah, she's a looker, I'll tell you. She is a looker. Now, before we, we talked about the somber thing, I haven't introduced the rest of the panel. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have South Boston Jeff, the greatest celebrity stalker hey, of all time. Hey. Glad to be here. And Glad the, to be here. And the milkman himself, Quincy Briscoe, otherwise known as QB. How you doing? What's going on, QB? Ah, nothing about yourself. All right, it's a little somber down here. You know, Ricky Bittman's jukebox no longer in existence. Ah, that's so heartbreaking. It is. You you never got to go on there and talk about your favorite music or anything. Then we'll go somewhere where I can still talk to him. Um, okay. Maybe not on the air, but um, that's right. Who, who you know, says we can't go dance? And I'm kicking the... myself for not doing a show with you. And I'm kicking way. myself for not doing a show with Johnny Maff. I just never got around to who it. Who says we can't go somewhere and do charity bits with the songs? That's true. You can do it, or you can come into the barbecue and have one. Yeah. You know, uh, there's no law against doing charity bits with the songs. Yeah, well, we well there can, is. If Spotify yeah, won't let you say, I think might <laughs> So we'll get to uh, that discussion about that. But yeah, I mean, I, I saw your, your tweet about it and your Instagram post and you had the jukebox in the graveyard. Yeah. And uh, I know our good friend Chunk Palumbo was uh, Doug Palumbo, not yeah. Chunk. He's a wrestler. Sorry. <laughs> I was getting that confused. Sorry, Doug. Uh, he texted me and he was like, what happened? What yeah, happened? Yeah. He <laughs> wants me to call him. He needs the whole story. It was, it was like, a, you know, breaking news. And I was like, I, was like, I, I, I know as much as you do, I, Doug. I, Doug, if you're listening, I know you are. Um, I owe you a phone. I know, I, dude. I owe you a phone call. But here's the deal: I'm kind of sick of talking about it right now. I'm just, I'm really heartbroken, and I'm trying to get over it. But all I, right, well, you know, the one, I, well, one of these nights we got to get him. The on this sun thing. will come out tomorrow. Yeah, I hope so. Well, actually, tomorrow's going to rain. All right. Well, it's still all right. <laughs> like I said in the thing: the phoenix will rise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, I tell you, I had a hell of a lot of fun, and you know, through COVID. It, it really it, it kept you sane. It, it kept a lot of people entertained, and really. I, I, me included. Yeah, I enjoyed it. You yeah. do it right there in the Winnebago and all that other yeah, stuff. It was. It was a lot of fun. I think back to those times, you know, the the weird things that happened and. Galen broke up with his girlfriend on the air. Right. And well, how was Galen taking it? Well, that's just the thing. I mean, I know, he was, I know he was a little away for a while. Well, here's the deal. The latest episode, if you listen to the very, very end. The final one. Uh, yep. As I'm wrapping it up, I left the microphone on. And I was at Tasha's house. She was out. I was recording the last episode. I'm cleaning up. There's a... I opened the back door. It was Galen. It was. He came back. He returned. He came back. So we had a nice sit down and talk to him and everything. And he's very heartbroken. He was uh, involved with some internet pranksters. Have you seen these kids, these internet pranksters? I have not, uh, no. They're terrible. All of them. They, they do these awful things where they whip and they just screw with all the people and stuff. And I kept doing shout outs saying, you got to get off that horse. And he finally realized and he's no longer internet pranking. Wow. Good for so him. He's back trying to come up with some ideas for a show for maybe the both of us down the line. Well, you know, he was a very talented producer. He was very talented, but he just kind of went off the rails. He was like sick of hanging around with this old man. But you know, he said, I learned something from you, bit Right. So he's back in the saddle. Always respect your elders. Yeah. I and mean, he was coming back. We we're going to do a big return show. And he had to come back the night that the show ended. So, you know, go Well, at least it. he came back. He did, which was very nice. But, you know, we, I know you don't want to talk about it anymore, so we're not going to talk about it. No, but, no. I but, meant, you know, in, in general, I just, you know, I don't want to talk over the phone. And I, I, I just. It was an unbelievable uh, adventure. It was. And five seasons. Five seasons. And what year did you start that? 2021. 2021. Yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, imagine that. I, I, so if you were a TV show, you would have been in syndication. Yeah. Wouldn't that have been great? There you go. Well, you know what? <laughs> I think something serious is going to be coming wouldn't down the pike. Wouldn't that be awesome? I, like I said, I'm just throwing that out there. Who knows? Maybe. But you know what? If you have to do it serious, you can't do it over your phone. No, that's true. I guess I, I asked my buddy about that, and he said, you know, I think they send you some sort of equipment or something wow. like that or whatever, or, or you go to some place like the, the palatial penthouse. Like have the palatial like penthouse and, and record. And you just figure it out, I guess. I, I mean, if I, could do, if I could do 73 episodes using just this, just the phone. I can figure that out. There you that's go. I Unbelievable. Now, now, other breaking news here. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. You, Ricky Bittman. 
were in person. Yep. One of the most controversial stories of the last two weeks broke. And I'm never on that in the midst of you anything. You were up at the yeah. Cabot Theater in Beverly, Massachusetts, yep. when Richard Dreyfuss, the star of Close Encounters, American Graffiti, mm-hmm. and that shark movie Jaws. Mm-hmm. Jaws. Jaws. You went and saw a screening of Jaws in a Q&A with Richard Dreyfuss, and all hell broke loose. Yeah. Well... All heck broke loose. All heck broke loose. Now, <laughs> I saw the next day, it was all over the social media. The, yep. the cabinet sent out a, a message saying, we apologize, blah, 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 blah. Yep. What's the real story? Okay, the real story is this. First of all, it was a fantastic night. He had a woman with him. She was the moderator, and I, I don't remember her name. He's known her for 59 years. She's a producer. Really? Redheaded woman. Older. And she was just asking the standard questions. All she did, she walked you through his history of his films. Right. And then she'd play a little bit of a film, and he was very engaging. But the it, the, it started off very odd. First of all, as a gathering of Jaws fans, it was fantastic. I had a great Jaws shirt on. Everyone loved it. People were taking pictures with me. The people who were taking... I, some of the people who took pictures with me were people I saw walking out when the shit hit the fan later. Did you have a Narragansett? I did. I had actually four of them. So wow. it was great. They so you were very, very happy. Six dollar Narragansett deal for one night only. So... It started very strangely in that uh, they said, in addition to Richard Dreyfus, we have a special guest, and they played a Taylor Swift song. And Richard Dreyfus came out <laughs> in this ugly frock over his clothes with his cane doing this very sort of sultry, demure, feminine dance put to a Taylor Swift song. Okay. Like a dress, a, fr- a frock, like a yeah, dress. Yeah, well, I don't want to say a dress because it, kind of, but like he just looked like a, it just looked like a like a house coat over his clothes. Oh, just, okay. You know, it wasn't like he was like like all like he wasn't in drag, but is it was just like sort of just dumped on him. Is that why shit hit the fan? Because he was dancing well, to Taylor Swift. If if it ended there, people would have just been like, that was weird. But now everyone's trying to connect the dots. And here's what I think he tried to say by doing that. He's like, I'm not as I'm, I'm no longer popular. I mean, to be popular today, you have to be Taylor Swift. So I think he was just sort of making fun of her popularity. Gotcha. So he comes out, and then these two people came out and helped him take it off, which, another, which again, the later uh, remarks made were that it was very like sexy. Two men undressed him and all that. I think they were helping him take it off so he wouldn't fall off. Because he's an old guy. Yeah, he would have fell down. Because the last time we saw him, he was driving around those larks. Yeah, and he had his cane, and he wasn't very steady on his feet sometimes. The dude is pushing 80. Yeah, yeah. And he was was very soft-spoken, too. So they had to really (laughs) amp up the microphones and all that. So that was weird enough to begin with. And he was very engaging. He was very informed. People were clapping for him and everything. And then this idiot woman asked him, mentioned the hashtag MeToo movement. Which is a loaded gun. I'm sorry. You know, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you talk about that. And he was talking about the movie he made with Barbara Streisand, which I should have looked up, but he made a movie with Barbara Streisand where he played her. Um, she was a prostitute, and he was a, 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 a psychiatrist. Was it the Goodbye Girl? No, no, no. That was uh, Masha Mason. That was a comedy. Oh, all right. But this was uh, later, after Goodbye Girl in the 80s. And it, it was a time it was when... was Yentl, was it? No, no. <laughs> Mental Yentl. Um, it was a time when women weren't really being taken serious in Hollywood. And, and the woman asked him, what was it like to work with Barbara Streisand? And he tried to be very earnest in his approach to saying... She was very talented. She was very smart, but I didn't listen to her. And he goes, and why didn't I listen to her? Because she was a stupid woman. <laughs> now Everybody wants to, ooh, Oh, right away. A lot of, ooh, But I got it. What he was saying was, that was the mentality of the times. He said, had I been smart enough to listen to her and done this thing that she t- talked about the way she thought it should be done, it would have been a thousand times better. But I didn't. Because she was a stupid woman. The name of the movie was Nuts. Nuts. And it came out in 1987. Yeah. Now, I want to see it because it looked interesting. I've never seen it. What a nice cast. It had Barbara Streisand, Richard Dreyfuss, Leslie Nielsen, Carl Malden, Eli Wallach, Maureen Stapleton, James Whitmore. Jesus. uh, And the rest. Yeah, and the rest. Did did you you like her in um, What's Up, Doc? Absolutely. She was gorgeous in What's Up, Doc. But so... I think what he, that remark was lost on people. He was trying to say it was the times, and I was stupid because I didn't listen to this stupid woman who he's trying to say wasn't a stupid woman at all. She had very good instinct and everything. So that's that. Then I don't know what led up to this. I mean, he was talking about society. He's writing a book about bringing the, the subject of civics back to the classroom. Civics. Yeah. Teaching people how to be citizens and being, you know, 
people of society. And he said, here's the deal. This day and age, I don't think it's a good idea for 10-year-olds to be deciding upon their genders. And immediately, people got up and started really? booing. Now, Not I, as many people that got up when uh, Tony Clifton talked about that uh, World War oh, II oh, joke yeah. of the concentration <laughs> no, camp. No, no, no. And three in particular walked out the right, door. Right, which then. we remain nameless. Yeah, we remain nameless. <laughs> That's all we eat. But anyway, so he said, and he said that. And he's, an, he's a guy pushing 80 years old. And he was asked a question about society and everything. Like, what's, what's an example of why should be civics be brought back to the classrooms? In his opinion, and in the book he wrote, you have a choice. You, you buy the book or you don't buy the book. He said something that a lot of people didn't agree with. Hundreds did not walk out. I saw maybe 12 people in my section. I was on the floor, and I could see both uh, ramps. I'm talking 12. Balcony, I can't speak for. But the people who did walk out were very foul-mouthed. They went outside, and they caused a disturbance. They, they tried to make it very uncomfortable for the people in the theater to hear. So they, they just, you know. So they were and, jerks. Yeah, and then they went out, and then they weaponized social media. They said hundreds of people walked out. He was racist. He did, never said a racist thing. He never said a misogynistic thing. He never said a homophobic thing. He never said a gen, trans uh, phobia thing. He, he just, he was asked a question, and he answered it. Should he have been asked the question? Probably not. What does that have to do with Jaws? <laughs> Well, again, she was talking about, it was his, his book, you know, you know okay, where, right, are you, right, where right. are you now in your life and sure, that type sure. of thing. And he, was, and, and he just, he basically said something also to the effect of, as he was leaving, he says, hopefully we get society back on track because if we don't, we're all in trouble. And he pointed at the audience with his cane and he goes, and you know what I'm talking about. And he got a, stand, good. And he got a standing ovation. Right. And that was it. So he, he didn't come out and say, really, I mean... I, it would be tough for me to, to defend him if he came out and said, oh, you know, that this and that. I mean, listen, society is what it is, whether you agree with it or not. Everybody's here, and we got to learn to get along with one another. And I don't think he said anything hurtful or... or that's just my... I mean, and again, I was there, and that's exactly you what I heard. You were there. That's exactly what I heard. Mm -hmm. And but, I'm going to, and I'm gonna uh, like, uh, respect uh, his uh, opinion as a nice person because I've, uh, we've met him, uh, like, uh, countless times sure. and everything. Me, um, uh, me, you, TC. And, uh, like, uh, he was a gentleman, always yeah. a gentleman to us and everything. He never had to, uh, like, uh, he didn't have to stop and talk to talk to us, but he right. always did and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know what kind of, he, he, how nice of a guy he is and everything and uh, now he definitely is an old crank exactly and yeah, but, that's who he is yeah, now he's he, in a, and he's uh, done the Hollywood thing I think course. he should uh, have a right to uh, voice his opinion and, and everything he's gonna do that in his book and they asked him about it and that's what he said so I mean and, and you know I, I go to a lot of rock concerts and stuff and I don't know how many times I've been to a rock concert where the artist will preach from the stage their politics and I don't always want to agree. I don't always agree, but I'm there to hear the music. So I just sort of like, hey, this will pass and sure. get back to the yeah. show. It's why I don't go see you too. They're a great band, but I 100%. hear, I, yeah, I yeah, hear 100%. like, I, I, I hear uh, like uh, half of it is uh, Bono speaking his politics. Exactly. And nobody wants to say that. But, you know, I've been in that same situation. Did I get up and leave and say that, that you know, they're insensitive to me? No. But I'll tell you, and it, it, it's much more that way than the Dreyfus way. There's much more people going out there. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There are much more people t out there saying this and that, that that I can't feel a certain way than there are, the, like the Richard Dreyfus is saying, other people shouldn't feel that way. So, What well, was the movie any good? The movie was fantastic, as always. You know, no surprises. Right. But, uh, and it was great to see it on the big screen again. And people, you know, it's funny, people were calling out lines and people were, were talking back to the screen, et cetera, et cetera. It was, it was really good to see a lot of Jaws fans. I'm telling you, the theater was sold out. And there was a lot of people still in their seats after that and to watch and enjoy. Imagine paying ninety dollars and the guy you don't agree with somebody, you just leave. Yeah. And then like the Was he before or after the movie? He did it before. And then um, the Cabot sends out this apology email. Right. So then like the next day they're advertising these comedians and just, you know, for shits and giggles, because I I'm a punk. I on Facebook I said, Hey, if I go to this show and I'm offended, will I get an apology email? I mean, really. I mean but then again, you know, the the, the Cabot had to do it. They had to say that. Well, especially in Beverly, Massachusetts, all, yeah. all those, you know, uh, yeah. what are they called? Snowflakes? Yeah. I'll, I'll probably yeah, fund them and whatnot. Whatever you call them. I mean, it just was, it, it really just made it like kind of sour. And, uh, I mean, in Richard Dreyfuss' defense, he is pushing 80. He grew up in a different era. Yeah. I mean, he was what? He was born around what? World War II? I would imagine, yeah. So, yes. I mean, and he, you know, he did grow up with a silver spoon in his mouth out in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. You uh, know? If I was there, I would have uh, said, well, was it like working with Jane Fonda? 
I mean, yeah. he did. And like, uh, what was that movie? Like, uh, he was stuck in a wheelchair, Richard Dreyfus, and uh, he was a writer or something, or a Vietnam veteran or something. No, that was John Voight, wasn't it? Coming home. Oh, yeah, you could be right. <laughs> well, Richard Dreyfus did do a movie where, where he was uh, in a wheelchair or in a, in a hospital bed. Well, he was in a wheelchair at the end of What About Bob? <laughs> true, He talked true. about that. He talked about Bill Murray. Did he throw, throw the ashtray at him? He told the ashtray story, and he said, uh, they said, what was it like working with uh, Bill Murray? And he says, well, most of you know. And he went into the whole story, and he says, I don't like Irish, drunken Irish bullies. And no, no, nobody got upset about that, drunken Irish. Because Irish people don't get offended. <laughs> no, exactly. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Great. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody threw an ashtray at my father at my confirmation. You know what I, I, you know, things my Irish grandmother threw at me growing of up? Of course. But so that's the ha that's the truth. That was the truth that happened that's there. The Point, you were, you were at ground zero yeah. when that happened. And when I heard about that, I said, oh, we got to get Ricky Bittman on here to yeah. actually tell the truth. Yeah. So hopefully people who are listening to this that weren't there we got a bird's eye view yeah. of actually what happened there. That was it. That was it in a nutshell. Nothing racist, nothing homophobic, nothing transphobic. Yeah, yeah. there are like uh, there are always going to be people that ruin it these days, like uh, the, the militant, uh, whatever the uh, like uh, like uh, militant groups uh, or whatever. Yeah. I don't want to. I, I don't want to go. I don't want to go naming off groups because yeah. I uh, I'll get, get censored. Yeah. yeah. Next thing you know, clouded conversations will be canceled. Yeah, we don't need that, do we, Quincy? No. Milkman. I mean, all we're trying to do is putting a storm on our head, like a, we're putting a like a storm on our cloud. Put what do you think, Quincy? You, you, you feel more like a man or a woman right now? A man. Oh, you, you thought for a couple seconds, though, didn't you? A man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a man, baby. But yeah. It's, but it's pH balance for a woman. Yeah. <laughs> Manly, yes, but I like it too. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a big time commercial break and we'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Captain Dave Marciano. And how would you like the freshest local New England seafood shipped to you overnight? No running around from store to store to find what you like. We have it here at AngelicaSeafoods.com. Everything from tuna, haddock, cod, clams, lobsters, scallops. We have it all. The finest seafood overnight to your door anywhere in the continental U.S. AngelicaSeafoods.com. Alrighty, welcome back from that big time commercial break. During the commercial break, Ricky Bittman, you were talking about some sort of new drink that you yeah. discovered. Now, Tasha and I went up to the world famous Kowloon. The Kowloon. Route 1 in Saugus. Kowloon. They yep. just opened their outdoor venue. I'm grandfathered in there. I'm like telling that. you, nothing. It, 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 it gets better every year. All right. So we went out, we sat outside. There was a young lady there playing by the name of Maddie Ryan. She played from 7 to 10. We said we're only going to stay for an hour. We stayed, of course, for three hours. Of course. Um, got some nice appetizers. We didn't overdo it this time. What kind of appetizers? Well, here's the thing. When we go, especially when we go with other people, we order the same crap over and over. Saugus wings? Well, I'm the only one that eats the wings on the bone, so it was just the two of us. But what I we did was she likes chicken fingers. Chip and fingers. And I like, exactly, and I like chicken wings. Right. And what was the other dish? Oh, and she likes the egg rolls. Okay. Okay. So I said, that's really kind of enough for the two of us. We didn't need rice and we didn't need noodles. It was just one of those nights where we just felt like, and it was perfect amount of food. And the food was fresh, it was hot, and it was delicious. But we sat at this little bar off to the side, and you can see the stage. And the music was fantastic. It was a nice crowd there. It was a beautiful, beautiful night. But they announced their uh, new drink, and it's Kowloon is on the can, and it's called Levia, L-E-V-I-A, and it's cannabis infused seltzer, Jeff. Uh-oh. I've heard of that. I've oh. had plenty of those. Come on. But if you have it with the Kowloon can? Oh, no, absolutely yes, not. It's, it's, a, it's a Kowloon. I can't make the... I, I can't... I can't seem to make this picture. Let's see the picture then. See, this is... Uh, it's the cow. It's got Kowloon on the can, and it's Mai Tai flavored. Oh. But it's cannabis-infused seltzer, so... So it's uh, not, no alcohol. No alcohol. Well, that, 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 that'll be good. I'll, I'll try yeah, one of those. Yeah, so keep your eyes out That's for that. That's a nice-looking collector's can yeah, right there. Oh, right? It certainly one. is. So it's uh, it's available on their food truck and soon to be available in the restaurant, but they were talking about it, and uh, it was just recently, um, I guess a company called AYR Wellness. I don't know how AYR Wellness, Wellness plays into it, but it's their product, and it's a limited-edition cannabis-infused Mai Tai flavored. Well, you feel seltzer. well after you drink it. 
I, I had a Mai Tai that night, and I felt great. It had nothing to do with the cannabis, but it was a regular Mai Tai, and it was absolutely outstanding. Can you make a bong with it after you drink all the I fluid? Bet, I bet Jeff could. I bet he could, do. Sure, sure. <laughs> what, are some the things things. You made, what are some of the things you've made a bong out of in your lifetime? Uh, well, uh, mm. I've made uh, most of the bongs out of uh, bottles, uh, just like this. Like I, a Pepsi uh, bottle? Uh, yeah, I, uh, but like... Uh, and a pen, and I uh, cut the pen in half, and uh, like uh, I stick it down in the side, and uh, then I'll take a little tin foil, put it in the bowl, becomes half, and I make the bong that way. But uh, you know, there are, I've had friends I've smoked out of out of like apples and stuff like that, but that's okay. But uh, like. Uh, it's uh, it's always a waste and uh, uh, it's a waste of an apple. Oh, it's a good, it's <laughs> a good, a good apple. So, so, so let's get on the brass tack. You're like the MacGyver of marijuana. Well, uh, yeah, I could uh, like uh, build a really nice uh, uh, bong out of it, but uh, only when I don't have one. But uh, yeah, I've uh, built some uh, really nice bongs uh, uh, out, out of gar uh, out of well, not out of garbage, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just explained to you, yeah, yeah, like all you need is a little. Maybe a little tin foil for your bowl and, and uh, in an old in a big pen. So you and you poke your big pen right through the bottle, through the side of the bottle, and then uh, the, and then the, like uh, you, that's where you may you, you put your pot at the end of that, or you could uh, or you could uh, um, put it right in the top, and then make it go straight down, and then like well. It's like an emergency tracheotomy with a stick yeah, knife. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> like uh, once the crackheads started uh, doing it, uh, made, yeah. like uh, like uh, they like that uh, HBO Lowell High on Crack Street. It showed them making uh, <laughs> uh, like uh, their little crack pipes out of nip bottles, yeah, and, yeah. and it ruined the, the the whole image. Well, there you go. So they I'll have all this a... initiative when it comes to making crack pipes, but not getting a job. Those <laughs> crackheads. Yeah. Those crackheads love not having a job. What do you think of those crackheads, Quincy? They're crackheads. Uh, now, um, the trouble is that stuff, they legalized it. Now, and, um, they didn't legalize it, crack. Yeah, they never legalized crack. <laughs> they legalized but marijuana, they, Quincy. There's a big difference between marijuana and crack. Well, how big a difference? Okay, an anthill is marijuana. Yeah. Mount Vesuvius is crack, yeah. all right? Marijuana, you oversleep and you miss your niece's communion. All right. Crack, all right. You, crack you die. Cr crack you screw your cousin. <laughs> 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 and you say, oops. You want, you want to try crack, Quince? No. All right, all right. No, I don't want any of that stuff. All right, all right. Well, you know, we, 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 we aim to please, Quince. You ever see the episode of King of the Hill where, where Hank actually accidentally buys crack as bait? No. <laughs> It's, oh, yes, I did see that one. That that, yeah, like, uh, I'd like to buy some bait. <laughs> yeah, I got all the bait you need, man. And uh, it ended up working at oh, first. And then, uh, like, uh, all the fish got strung out. Yeah. And then, like, uh, it worked. And then, like, uh, he, he was like, hmm, I'd like to buy some bait. I could have sworn this is the fish I just caught. <laughs> it was like she's jumping in the boat practically. Now, what's the strongest drug you've ever had, Quince? Ooh. I never took any drugs. You've taken plenty of drugs. You go down to the drugstore all the time. Neosinephrine. Anison. <laughs> Anison. Oh, my God. <laughs> What's neosinephrine? Another headache pill? Or? No, so you spray it up your nose. Clear. Yeah, you get a clogged nose and whatnot. Primatine uh, mist. I don't know. Uh, Buffering. <laughs> I took those like uh, in the 70s. I don't think Buffering's around anymore. Get some other kind Good of headache pill. Stomach. Supposedly, I heard this on Alex Jones many, many years ago. They were putting AIDS in Buffering. Shit, I used to think that when I was a kid. My mother used to give me Buffering. <laughs> I don't know back then. Oh, I'm okay. talking about later on. They, they, say, they were lacing it with AIDS or something. That's what so, I heard. So that's what I, I took I, off. I trust Alex Jones. I don't want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Just, stop we, all, the, we all took buffering. Stop well, the buffering. The trouble with that like, back in the 70s, they were doing some of the Tylenols. Now they're doing with the bufferins. Remember that? Yeah, that geez, was fucking yeah. brutal. I'll never I mean, that. for Christ's sake, can we even buy headache pills anymore without people tampering? Well, that's why you came up with the remedy of wrapping the uh, extension cord around your head. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> at least, you know. Um, <laughs> You're not going to get AIDS off an extension cord. I can't remember the last time I had a headache. I have one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I get them a lot. <laughs> Really, I used to get them quite a bit, but I don't really, think, yeah, migraines. I, I, well, no, I, I mean migraine is a whole different animal, but I get a bad headache every now and then. I'd have to take something, but I can't remember. Last when time it was I a paint factory next door to Rastani Productions, I used to get the fumes uh, of that. That will do it. That gave me a headache. Yeah, that'll do it. And uh, you know, when I get allergies and whatnot, maybe a, a slight one, but never one of these pounding like you know, I need to put like you know a compress on my head. Now, how are your allergies right now? They're not, today they're a little off. But for the, the season so far, you've been. Um, I don't know. No. 
I haven't had any allergy attacks. No, I just re- recently the pollen thing, uh, and I posted that today. Remember, I had yeah. that picture of my head exploding and yeah. whatnot. It was, uh, it, I think it was because they think they did a little lawn work uh, around the mansion. Okay. So it may have loosened the pollen and I mean, whatnot. the cars are covered in it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's brutal. Well, my car's always covered in stuff. But I, That's you know, because Abby... We're having financial, you know, you know, everybody's in like a recession. Yeah. So even the cow washers we have down here at Rastani Productions yeah. have been let go. Wow. So that's why we're going to be throwing. I know the cup budget's out the window. Yeah, so well, yeah. Good thing we're going to have a little rain tomorrow. Just look. They said it should be a good rain to wipe all this pollen off the cup. Really? Oh, yeah, good. That's okay. What I heard. All right. Well, I'll tell. I'll tell her that. You know. Yeah. But it's just. It was just. And I, I saw we had a Probably budget you don't meeting. Don't think they would have sponge in a little bed soon. Her, not me. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, hundred percent, huh? Hundred percent. What do you think, Quincy? You sit, about- you sit in the car and Abby washes it with her, her bathing suit on with a sponge. Would you? <laughs> you'd like that, huh? Yeah. With little Van Halen playing, yeah. maybe. Yeah, we did a little track people, and um, <laughs> it sure would all the wrong people well, track me. <laughs> yeah. But what was the money? What when we put the money towards? What money? What are you talking about? <laughs> we'll, we'll buy some pizza and some uh, some burgers. We'll buy some crack for you. Yeah. Well, you can have the crack, but... Uh, <laughs> Are you talking about... No, okay. <laughs> Cause Peter I Gri- yeah, Peter Griffin did crack, too. Remember that one? What do you know? <laughs> like, uh, what do you, he uh, gave up drinking? What, what are you doing now? Crack? <laughs> what the... They had to uh, beep it out because uh, Brian actually swore. <laughs> That's not exactly a great uh, substitute for drinking, Peter. <laughs> I like the one that got where um, Lois was kind of selfish to win the trophy. But then Peter Griffith could sing, but he could only sing uh, like pretty decent, all all shit faced, all drunk. Oh, on the piano, yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the he, piano. So uh, the, the only way I'm gonna win this trophy because I, I guess someone, a bitch, was like, making fun of like Lois. <laughs> so it says like, I'm gonna get you, you know. Um, so um, the only way to get the trophy, they just got like, pouring beer down Peter, you know, and then and he had uh, towards the end of the episode they showed one brain cell. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, got some all, all, all the beers he drank. Uh, one brain cell. All his brain cells are burnt out. That's all you need. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's like, <laughs> and the one brain cell finally went. <laughs> Speaking of one brain cell, didn't I say don't hit the hit, hit the console? <laughs> so how? So what's the most the heaviest drug you did? Back to this, you know, was it Anison, Bufferin, or crack, or meth? What was it, Quince? Bufferins, I guess. Bufferins, all right. Okay, what are, now did you OD on Bufferin? No, I didn't OD, uh, but I took them all when it was necessary. Because Jeff and I knew a guy who tried to OD on Advil. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. True, true. What happened to um, yeah, well, his head probably he's, well, they had to pump his stomach and everything, but like oh. uh, the doctors were, were all like, uh, I don't think you can even OD on Advil anyway yeah, and everything. Just he just sick. did it for attention. I but, try, uh, try. I, I posted it on Facebook and said, you know what? I just oh, I had a whole bottle of Advil and I'm, I'm checking out because it's Christmas time and I got Paulie no Paulie Bear did this? Paulie Paul? Uh, Actually, Paul yeah, no, what Paul will Bear. happen <laughs> if someone ODs on bufferins or anything, you uh, bleed in the stomach and that can lead to uh, serious trouble. Oh, they Anyone? won't have a headache for a long time. Yeah, you, yeah, don't, you well, don't have any pains for Well, the long. people that you want to die of an OD never do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and others try no, to like, do it with Advil. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you OD on aspirins or headache pills, I mean, if you don't take them as prescribed, yeah, you will have trouble. I heard you try to OD on Flintstones vitamins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now, is it true that you only wanted Wilma and Betty ones? Well, sure. Come on. Now. Why not have fun with woman Betty? You know, it's like uh, he's always been a man's man. I will say that you got to you got to chew on Betty and Wilma. Huh? <laughs> Do they have pebbles? Oh, sure. They had fruit in uh, the cereals or, or uh, no, vitamins. I'm talking about the vitamins. Uh, maybe they had pebbles because the, the cereal was just flakes. They you know they weren't in the shape of yeah, the character. Looked like skin tags. Like yeah, fruity skin. They look like psoriasis from like a from a Skittles patient. I don't think they had that. Okay, um, I'm just making sure on that. They, they were actually pretty tasty vitamins, if I remember. Oh yeah, um, who didn't like um, the Flintstone chewable? Yeah. What are they, do they with, still make those? I'm looking. Oh yeah, out. they still have pebbles, co- fruit and cocoa pebbles. No, that's the cereal. We're talking about the vitamins. Oh, oh, the vitamins. Uh, if you look hard enough, I suppose yeah, they yeah. do have them. But like, uh, if you, I mean, it, like now, uh, it, like. 
if you take the gummy, now they have gummy vitamins, so uh, they that taste way better. <laughs> really? Yeah. If you look but hard like, enough, I, I suppose. I, I mean. They should make a. They should, all right, here's a good trivia question. The Flintstone chewables are a lot like very chalky now, compared to other tasty vitamins. They taste can. like sweet tots. So they're like, remember those candies? Oh yeah, yeah. They like, yeah, you're right. They're like dust particles. They had a very distinct flavor. But they were good. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm looking at um, the the the, the, the little characters. Yeah. What do you think they have? They uh, had uh, Barney. They had Fred. They had the car. And uh, I'm sure they had Dino. It's funny. They had Dino, and I'm looking at one where they have Gadzook. Was it green? You, you mean no, Gazoo? he was orange. The, the Great Gazoo? Yeah, you tell me that. Isn't that Gazoo? That is the Great Gazoo. Yeah, look at it. That looks like him. Doesn't look like the helmet he's got on? Yeah, that certainly is Gazoo. That's the Great why, Gazoo. I, I never why, knew that. why do they make him green? Uh, exactly. It looks like they didn't have any green. Maybe they wanted to like, see what happens if people will buy it. You know, if they make it a different color. And this picture has B Barney, Pebbles, and Wilma. Let's see. Look at. Let me get the picture analyzed. No, I isolated it. Now I'm craving. Oh, actually, wow. Yeah, there you go. Pebbles looks like she's grape. Wilma's blue, and F is that Fred or Barney? That's Barney. That's Barney. And he's orange. Yeah. So okay. Very strange. We need to we need to try see if they have to see if they still make these things. They do. Oh no, they definitely do. Are the chewable like those? Yeah. The chalky yeah. ones. Yeah. Oh, we have to find those and do a taste I test. I was listening to a, a, a what you call it a, a, another podcast one time. Uh, tell them Steve, Dave, and they were talking about that. They, they really. He likes to eat them to this day. He'll have one every now and I then. I take a multivitamin every day. I, you know, you're awesome to have a Wilma vitamin every day. I think I brought mm -hmm. them once. My mother was like, "All right, I'm going to buy these, but you better take them." And you know what, Quince? When we drive you home in the limo, we're stopping off at one of those 24-hour drugstores, yeah. and we're going to find Flintstones vitamins. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, if we'll see if they have them. I need energy. I, I suppose if you look hard enough, eventually you'll find them. And I'll send you in. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> It'll be a, a cute mission. Yeah, it's well, been can... a while. It's been quite a while. You I mean, be... with all the vitamin water lately and, uh, well, yeah. I'll be happy gummies. to go in there and say, hey, I need some They're Flintstones. They're available on Amazon, of course. Flintstones vitamins. I'll be very chewables. direct. And if they have them, I'll get them in just about two minutes. You think they have Jetsons ones? Number one pediatrician. There's only one way to find out. I'm going to go in there and say, hey, I need some uh, Jetsons vitamins and Flintstones vitamins. Now, <laughs> what is, what, there's reviews. On for Flintstone, vitamins? Yeah, on Flintstones vitamins. I, I'm just uh, let's see the reviews on this. There's 17,000 reviews. 17,000. Well, just give us the first three. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm not going to read all 17,000. Sheila in Denver. Taste is good. Helps to give it extra energy. Just wish they were softer to chew or in gummy form. Oh, she's a May 16th, 2024. She doesn't even know they are. Oh, a, a very effective vitamin. I had major vitamin deficiencies as an adult. My internist told me to take two of these every day. Within just a few months, my deficiencies were resolved, and I was feeling better. <laughs> what a fucking douche. I bet. You know what he did? He, he probably went yabba-dabba-doo at the end. <laughs> My yeah, but they yeah, did but not upset no. my stomach. What is this guy's a fucking pussy? Honestly, God, <laughs> great for adults that can't take big pills. <laughs> oh, I, I need a small I pill. I can't take a big pill. Give, fucking people. Give me give, pebbles. You know, you think you're doing bad, and you listen to this fucking asshole. How, how much of a loser do you have to be to do a review on a Flintstones vitamin? Here, take take this uh, 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 one a day. Oh no, it's too big. <laughs> I can't swallow a pill like that. Well, at least they know they're in stores. Yeah, great, so, for, the, great for the whole family. For the great Buy for, it. Great for the whole family. <laughs> you wouldn't, I mean, 17,000 reviews. 17,000 imbeciles yeah. out there reviewed Flintstone oh. vitamins. Adult vitamins give me the wind. <laughs> I have to take Flintstones chewables. Well, on that, see that now. That's 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 another topic for another podcast. Is people who review nonsense. Exactly. I, I never would have guessed that I'm not. I could sit here and read those all night. <laughs> Actually, that could be. Here's your, there's your new show. Here we go. We're gonna read read uh, product reviews on Amazon. No, just Flintstone vitamins. Just you Flintstone. 17, yeah, seventeen thousand. You have seventeen thousand yeah. episodes. You could we'll do, do one ten review. An episode. <laughs> Last me for the next rest of my life. Oh my god. Uh, now I want a Flintstones vitamin. Yeah, just they definitely had a just to see if it, it helps my deficiency. Yeah. Oh, these pills are so small and effective. Oh, I want to read like uh, yeah. Give me a, send me over that website. I, I like uh, there's got to be some bad reviews too. These things suck. Yeah. Doesn't taste anything like have, Wilma. I think you might have something there, uh, Rick. 
<laughs> Betty tastes like Wilma. Wilma tastes too much like Betty. <laughs> we'll call you show um Can't they where's put the a bam bam in there? Where's Mr. Slade? Come on, bring yeah, on Mr. Yeah. Slade. And you get all the douchebags like, uh, who's we'll the, where's the, Ann Mogrock? The Flintstones vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> Flintstone! <laughs> I can see a Quincy Briscoe vitamin. <laughs> oh tastes like God. milk. Yeah. For those people who, what's, when you have, what's, what's milk deficiency? What is that? Lactose so, intolerance. Yes. Oh that, my God. You could be the spokesperson for that. The lactose intolerance uh, vitamin. Big picture of you. <laughs> Milky Way. Do you like Milky Way bars? I used to when I was a kid, yeah. Well, who well, didn't why, love Snickers and Milky Way? Now, why as an adult don't you like them? I hate when people say that. I like them as a kid. Yeah. Why don't you like them now? Because I'm trying to cut down on candy. Yeah, Maybe yeah, once yeah, a like long, great while, I'll, I'll break down and have a small piece of candy. But, um, Ooh, but piece the, of candy. I used Ooh, to say but, I uh, because I have a sweet a sweet tooth, but now I have half a sweet tooth. But yeah. candy, <laughs> but the candy's got to be soft, you know, that it's chewable. and you know, not. Why, is that why? Because you're older and your teeth aren't as good as they were when you were a kid? I ain't as good as I Well, as well. I would have like one or two pieces of candy, but then just time went on and then... But if I really want a piece of candy, eh, then I'll break down and have a Reese's. You know what's a unique word? What? Nougat. Yeah, nougat. Yeah. <laughs> what exactly is nougat? It's like it's not. Uh, I think it's like, I think the best way to, to describe nougat would be the inside of a Three Musketeers box. Okay. That's nougat. That kind of looks like, you Whipped know. something. It, it looks it looks like a melted whatchamacallit bar. Yeah. But but when I heard the, the nougat, the best they say the best for calories the or that is like if you want to watch your weight and calories, the best candy bars are Three Musketeers, and it's also the worst candy bar. Really? Oh no, yeah, I, I don't like them. So I, you know, I knew a kid who had really bad acne. Yeah. And he had really really bad acne. Yeah. And when it, when they popped open, it looked oh. like nougat coming out. <laughs> oh Jesus, that's bad acne for Christ's sake. <laughs> his name was Dave. I don't want to say his name on the air, but <laughs> hey, it, Dave. It, it looked. <laughs> It just looked like I even said it. I think he probably probably beat me up or something. But I go, I go, Dave. That looks like nougat coming out of your face. <laughs> was it like when uh, Rick, Ricky Steamboat uh, had his face rubbed in? Did you see the biography? Yes, of I did. That was, that was, yeah, it was, it was great. Lots of ingredients in some of these candies. Holly nougat. Race. We're talking here. <laughs> Holly Race had to rub him with the with, with the, the sandpaper. With the sandpaper. Right. All right. One of you guys hold his arms. <laughs> this is gonna <laughs> hurt. This is gonna hurt. <laughs> then they did it to Ricky Morton a couple years later. Oh, did they? Right. Oh, God. But, but back to nougat, Quincy. What do you think? Nougat. nougat. What do you think about nougat? What do you think nougat is? He's a rock and roll star. Just a... Uh, head nougat. Fairly rich and great. The, the nougat alone, you know, uh, just dig it out of a candy bar. Maybe it's it can like, taste... It's, like, like, a, it's, it's like, like a toffee. It's like a cream toffee because there's also new... It's uh, started with those Swedish... Uh, like, uh, well, it starts out in a, like, uh, like in those chocolate boxes. There are plenty of nougats okay, in chocolate cause, boxes. Cause, is it so, I think it's soft. Not a, it uh, is soft. It's oh, like, yeah. It's like, it's like candy mucus. Once in a while, maybe nougat will be a, um, a nice treat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's what's inside the uh, Three Musketeers, Bob. But yeah. it's it, like but, uh, there's a lot can, of nougat But can out you there. go to the store and just buy nougat? I don't think so. So what is it? I mean, if you, it has to be mixed in with it's the gimmick. Like a, what do they call that? It's like a... Um I mean, do you remember the episode of the? Uh, there was an episode of The Simpsons where, like, uh, like he gave him, like, uh, Apu gave him, uh, gave himself uh, as a gift for Valentine's Day. So he turned himself into a chocolate, and when he broke <laughs> out, he said, "My ears are filled with nougat." So. <laughs> Now be better lay a finger, my boy a finger. All right, you ready? Uh, All right, sh- he's reading so, what nougat is. Nougat. Right? It's a French origin. It is a family of confections made with sugar or honey, roasted nuts, almonds, walnuts, pistachios, hazelnuts, and macadamia nuts are common. Whipped egg whites and sometimes Ooh. chopped candy fruits. The consistency of nougat is chewy and it is used in a variety of candy bars and chocolates. The word nougat comes from the Occitan pan nougat, pronounced panuat, seemingly from Latin panis nucatus. The late colloquial Latin adjective nucatum means nutted or nutty. So it has, nu- you know, it, 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 it can be used in a lot of different ways, but that's basically it. And it also can Neat. come out of Dave's uh, zits on yeah. his face. Oh. So egg white. So that's probably why it's healthier than like uh, caramel and all that other okay, stuff. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> Now, now we know. Like the caramel that, is good. Yeah, like that classic. Uh, ever see that classic Monty Python sketch with oh. the uh, with like uh, yeah. like uh, Wizzo's chocolates? Wizzo's chocolates. <laughs> it was a spring surprise. You bite into steel boats, pop through both cheeks. People don't expect that. Pop a nice chalky in your mouth. You have your che- don't expect to have their cheeks pierced. 
Oh, what's this one? <laughs> Crunchy frog. Yeah. Is there a real frog in here? Oh, yes, just a little one. It's just a little one. Rip it. Do you take the bones out? If you took the bones out, it wouldn't be crunchy, would it? <laughs> he throws up in his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. I mean, uh, you know, uh, like Artis, he's not as big a Python fans as me and you. I, I, but, never, uh, I never got it. I can't yeah, you've got to try I, it. I've tried many times. It's like almost as many times as I'm trying to watch Blade Runner. Yeah, I'm not a All right. Well, okay. I've good. given Blade Runner a million tries, and a good friend. And uh, Matt, who used to be a huge friend of Doctor Who, when we used to go over his house, everything in his house was British, all right? Okay, yeah, he's a and they used to sit there, file and they used to sit there and laugh hysterically at the Spanish Inquisition thing <laughs> on Monty Python. I sat there and I'm like, this isn't funny. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. <clears throat> I was like, I guess because I'm not British. No, I'm not. Well, you've been there, right? No. Oh, I thought you went to England. No, oh, Doc McMurphy might have. Oh, he might have gone yeah. there. But okay, but I'm getting... He was born there. But when Abby's done here, but I, let's bring her in. I guarantee yeah, she's, she's, she's going to fucking Anglio. clue what, 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 what Monty Python... Is that a snake? Oh. You know? <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the best stuff. Okay, see, I could never get into it. I got into the young ones. Life of Bro. Oh, yeah, I like them too. The young ones was hysterical. Oh yeah, it gives me uh, good gut, gut laughs and yeah. it uh, gave us Motorhead. But like, uh, yeah, it was like uh, <laughs> yeah. every and there's not many episodes at all. What is no. there? Like twelve, uh, eight, twelve, <laughs> twelve. That's, so, a, that's uh, a British sitcom. Well, you know the funny yeah. thing is, I just discovered uh, Mrs. Brown's Boys. Have you ever seen that, Jeff? No, uh, one or two episodes. I, it's I, I find that good. pretty funny. Yeah. I like when yeah. they go off script and they start talking to the camera and they they'll walk from one set to another. Like this comedian plays an old woman named Mrs. Brown. And she's like, oh, where's my purse? And he goes, you left it in your kitchen. And you'd expect to like, oh, damn. She gets up and walks like to the set of the kitchen. Okay. And the camera follows her. And then she walks back to the bar. It's just one of those things. See, the only British shows I ever watched were Doctor, Doctor Who, <laughs> The Young Ones, yeah. and Benny Hill. Well, those are all great shows, and I watched them all too. In yeah, did, but watched Benny Bay. Hill with my father yeah. and everything. Oh, my old man loved Benny Hill. But you mm -hmm. got Python at the top, then you got Faulty Towers, then you got Benny Hill. Oh, I agree with yeah. Faulty Towers. That's yeah. a, that was a great show. Twelve episodes in that history. So uh, why is Monty Python so popular? Well, f honestly, for speaking, I when I watched it as a first time, it was the first time I'd ever seen a naked woman on television. Okay, I concur. A beautiful, she was in a store. Yeah, she was in the store like uh, there the was the the most boring guy possible, yes. and he's going uh, well, he's going about his day, yeah. and uh, he stops in for a, uh, for a newspaper, yeah. and then there's a gorgeous naked woman uh, standing behind the counter. He doesn't even this give is the time on of TV day. Yeah. on Channel Two, yeah. and uh, you're watching beautiful you tits. I mean, and, and they showed it on, yeah, on Channel Two. Like, I remember I was watching it in my we used to call my father's den because he worked the second shift. He'd come home at night, and that's where he would sit and watch TV because the living room was too close to the bedrooms. So I would sit in there and I'm like, oh my God, I had to tell all my friends. I saw this and they're like, oh, it was fake. It was fake. I was like, I don't think it was fake. I think it was real. And so that's what got you hurt. Boobs. Well, that. And then I, but it's like, it was great because, and that was the very first Python sketch I ever saw because I remember I was riveted because of the nude lady. And, uh, you know, Frankenstein was killing people at the bus stop and this guy was completely oblivious. Maybe I just saw a bad episode. Yeah, I mean there 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 might be a couple yeah, episodes. Yeah, the, I would the Spanish Inquisition one isn't their best uh, isn't no, their best yeah, work. It's you, you know, gotta say that. But it's I just find that and and the acting is really good. Terry Jones, to me, is one of the most talented actors and most talented comedic actors of all time. He really is my favorite Python. You know, Cleese gets a lot of the credit. Michael Palin, of course, and Eric Idle. They're the most well known. But Terry Jones for me was just the most talented. What about one. Terry Gilliam? Yeah, but he was the American. He did the animation, which was fantastic. The anim animation. Now Terry was Jones was the one who uh, played Mr. Creosote in the. Uh, yes, yeah, 100%, so, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he 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 was uh, one of the greatest. And oh. uh, I've met in. Uh, I've in, I've actually interviewed Carol Cleveland. Uh, oh really? Yeah, I She's have. A and babe. I. Babe. Yeah, and uh, well, she was. Yeah, she, and she was very nice when yeah. I talked to her. But uh, yeah, she agreed. With, she said uh, that uh, Michael Jones. I mean, uh, like uh, what's his name? Terry Jones was the uh, absolutely. The nicest one. Oh yeah, they said yeah. Cleese. Well, Cleese is a dick. Yeah, they said Cleese bullied him. Yeah, like, no, no, he's a jerk him. off. Yeah, yeah, he wouldn't. He wouldn't sign one day, yeah. and he was just arrogant. And uh, I liked Eric Idle in a few of the uh, you know movies that oh, he yeah. was in. Nice guy. I mean, I met Eric Idle. I met uh, Michael Palin, and um, that was it from the Pythons. But um, when Palin, when I met Palin, he was signing for a Fish Call Wanda at Tower Records free. Imagine that back in the old days, they did oh, it was nineteen eighty eight. In store promotion, signing movie posters, okay? Cleese was supposed to be there with him and he didn't show up. He's coming to Medford. I know, yeah. I heard. He's it's, like a, it's, like, it's like a British invasion over there. Now, the, 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 what's his name? He's going to get on stage him? and say all these anti um, 
right wing things. You know, he'll be, he's going to say a lot of, and, and no one's going to bat an eye. You know, because he's British. Because yeah, because they all look. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, he was on Monty yeah. Python, and he's now in yeah, Medford. Exactly. And oh my God. Here's what I hate about Trump. Uh, okay, well, we say something we haven't heard yet. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, here's he, what we he, hate about King Charles. Exactly. Right? Oh, blimey, you can't say that, can you? <clears throat> Yeah, here's a, here's a dirty Irishman named Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with him for a while, because I know you're not going to stop and sign for us. You know who's very funny on social media? I, speaking of Brits, who's that? Sean Ono Lennon. If you're on X, follow this kid. But was he wasn't he born here? Yeah, but I mean, well, he he's making fun of Prince Harry's book or something that just came out. He's like giving Prince Harry has a book. I guess so. Yeah. What's and it about? Him, of course. Him. Oh. And, you know how much he's been getting the shit into the stick his whole life. Who right? cares? And uh, like Sean Sean Lennon's been calling him up, but like he's getting a lot of shit from Brits now because he's he's you know saying disparaging things. Good. Yeah. I mean, shouldn't the Brits hate this guy? Didn't he defect to the United States? Exactly. And and and, and married what's her face, the most untalented yeah, person in Markle, the world, Megan. Whatever Markle. the hell. I don't even know her name. Megan Markle. Is Megan Markle. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Her name is she's, she's a ham and egger. I mean, where did she come from? I don't know. All man. of a sudden, she's like in the royal family. She was on some bootleg TV show, and like two, like five years ago. All I know is Princess Di must be spinning in her grave. Well, she was whacked by the I royal know, family. She's That's, a beautiful woman, you know. <clears throat> inside now, huh? Inside and out. She was no, lovely, she was. Lovely. She was. A, she was. A, she was a godsend. Yeah, and they couldn't have it because they're defended. They're they are descendants of Count Dracula. That's right. Eating babies? Eating? Oh, eating babies. Of course they are. <laughs> are you kidding me? Of course they eat babies all the time. Did you know that, there. Quincy? They eat babies over in England? Not jelly babies. Baby babies. The real, real babies? The queen and all the royal families, they eat. They drink baby blood and eat the babies. That's like grinded, nasty. Uh, yeah, yeah, like grinded fetus, uh, fetuses oh, and stuff oh, like that. I just got the douche chills for what real. Do think, what do you think those <laughs> British sausages are made of oh, over there? That's pretty nasty, though. Uh... <laughs> Did you see that new painting of Prince Charles or King Charles, whatever the hell his yeah, name it is? Like it was possessed. It's 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 like it's covered in look like he's covered in blood. Yeah, yeah. I and I guess like if that. you take two two of them and put it together, you can see Satan's face in it. Oh Jesus! So it's blatantly right in front of everybody again, and they just don't want to uh, talk about it. What, and his daughter-in-law there, what's her name, Kate Middleton or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's probably dead, and they have clones out there. Now. Yeah, she was very sick. That's so sad. she's gone. She took a hike. She wouldn't and, eat the babies. She wouldn't eat the babies. That's right. <laughs> And they made oh, just those. I used to talk about this to all my English friends over there. And some of them agree with me, and some of them <clears throat> think mm. I'm, you know, a damn Yankee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do they have royalty over there when they are really nothing more than a figurehead? Yeah, they're like Mickey Mouse. They're a tourist well, attraction. I think that's what it is. It's a tourist attraction. But you don't see them. If you go over there, you can, at least you're going to see Mickey Mouse if you go to Disney. Well, I mean, you're not going to see Prince, King, Child, whatever his name, walking down the street. Baby eating aside, I think it's a nice gig. I would take it if I could. No babies, but I would. Uh, I definitely wouldn't mind living in Buckingham Palace. Like, I'm going around with know. Jimmy Savile. Yeah. Oh, wow. Had to go there. Stay out of the kinder. Hey, you know what? He was <laughs> King Child's buddy. Like, uh, can we do anything to challenge the, the, the knights? <laughs> like, uh, like, uh, uh, they, they, they really so many them. people, like the even knighted, uh, bringing, uh, Elton John. Yeah, they would have to call them to battle. Yeah, I know. I, I wish we Ringo could, like, Star. summon a, to, like, a, a, get a, like, a, a big dragon or something, or, or, like, a, just, uh, <laughs> something like a, a posse of, uh, people acting as knights that, yeah. uh, go, go to, and American attack the, muscle yeah. heads with, like, uh, yeah. like mallets and, in, yeah, uh, attack axes. the royal castle and everything. Call see. the knights into action. Let's Ringo see what, using two hands let's see what you got for, yeah, let's see what you got. Elton, <laughs> and, 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 the, and most of them, have you noticed all these knights all live in the United States? Yeah, yeah. None of them live over there, like Andrew Lloyd Webber. I mean, they never had peanut butter so recently. They, they may have a little castle over there, you know, mm -hmm. pun intended, but they all live over here making our money. Of course, yeah, everybody yeah, like wants Sir Anthony over. Hopkins and. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been saying this for, since since I, I've been awoke. Mm -hmm. This country never left the rule of the throne. We may have our own government over here, yeah. but they still have their hands in everything. Yeah. We never really are left the the tyranny of uh, of the of the of uh, the UK. You might be right. No, I'm a hundred percent right. Well, the Irish will fight them to the end. Good. Mm. I'm half Irish, so I'm I'm, I'm with go. them. You understand that over there? <clears throat> I'm, I'm TC Overstani for Christ's sake. Give Irish back to the give Ireland back to the Irish. Don't let them have to take it away. I, I just, I just don't like, I just don't like the fact that these people in this country worship the throne. Yeah, well, a lot of people do. It's sick. I worship their comedy hierarchy. Yeah, 
Yeah. I like the I like the British comedy. I like British bands. But, not, you, that's oh, great. That's yeah. great. But I mean, I, I could give two shits about the king and all that. Yeah, he's a ham and egger. Yeah. I mean, they're all related anyway. Yeah. Well, I would imagine they're all a family, right? Well, um, no, I'm talking about like you know, incest. Oh well, going back and back. You know, they had that pure blood. That's true. They couldn't have no commoner out there. That's true. That's probably why they. Well, actually, she was related to them. Who? Uh, Princess Diana. She was? She was like the second or third cousin of, of, of King Charles. I never knew that. So, yeah, look it up. They're all related. It's one big mafia over there. They're all just a bunch of liars. Oh, speaking of mafia, I wanted to bring this up because you're a Godfather okay. fan. Okay. Yeah, hey, oh, good, good. <laughs> all right. This just hit me a couple nights ago. Okay. Michael Corleone, okay. who was the heir to the throne of the Corleone Empire after Vito Corleone died. Right. And he was all about talking about the future of the family. Mm -hmm. His wife was an Italian that would disqualify any of his sons to become a member of the mafia. Hmm. Am I wrong? All right, I think you're right. But wasn't he like the... the, the didn't he like, at the end, all be all last say of everything? But, he, but he, there's still a code... I mean, he he's, he's he was a member of one family. Well, he did go over to Italy to change that, and then look what happened. Okay, well, he was he was he was going to do that yeah. with Apollonia. Yeah, and why did he go with her? The one, not Apollonia, but the one that he ended up. Kay with. Adams. Oh. Do you know what a fucking? Uh, <laughs> she will push on her. And I don't but I'm just saying that you know he's talking about the history, of, you know, the history of the family, yeah. you know, the history of the family, blah blah blah, you know. Uh, you know, I want my sons to work me. What was it a bo was it a boy? Yeah, yeah. What's the point? It doesn't matter. She's know. not Italian. If you go by the rules laid out in, in Goodfellas, to be part of a crew, you have to be one hundred percent Italian, so they can trace all your ancestors back to the homeland. Well, then he got disqualified anyway because he ended up being a, a dancer, didn't he? Who the kid? Yeah, opera oh, singer. Opera singer. Yeah. Okay. And that's why they made Sonny's bastard son uh, yeah. the head. He know. was a real Italian. Maybe anyway, you know, Mancini. But yeah. but I'm just saying, we would, people, when Mario Puzo was writing this, didn't he? Uh, shit. <laughs> right, he was probably walking. After he dropped the manuscript off, and as he was walking out, he went, uh, oh, fuck it. You know what? <laughs> this ain't going to get made, and this is never going to yeah. get made anyway. Who's going to pick up on that? Some guy in 2024 discovered it. But I guess <laughs> the hidden story in it was, I mean, obviously Mario Puzo wrote The Godfather before it was a film. But when they were making it, the Kay Adams character was based on Francis Ford Coppola's wife, ah. who was an Italian, who was involved, you know, got married into the family. Oh, that happens. But Puzo wrote the story yeah. long before that. So wouldn't you think, I'm going to have a, you know, I'm going to continuation of the Corleone family when they have the heir to the throne. Oh, ooh. The yeah. other families would not allow that to happen. Yeah. That's why he was trying to kill them all. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's a plot point. I watched a movie recently with Steve McQueen, and he was called The Getaway, directed by Sam Peckinpah. Great shoot 'em up film, really good. McQueen was excellent in it. And one of the villains in it was the same guy that played Salazzo in The Godfather, who well, I've never seen him in. He's he one died that, very young. Did he really? Yeah, he died in his 40s. Oh, geez, you know everything. The one that, the one that got <laughs> shot at the... Not, the the uh, restaurant, Tread yeah, the Fields, yeah, the with, best with, in the with, city. Yeah, Tread the Fields, the best in the city. Vir Virgil Salazzo. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> who, 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 that guy, Sterling Hayden, was on the list to play Quint. That's right. I remember you always saying that. I forget that every now and then. I should have asked uh, Richard Dreyfus that instead of uh, having him get asked questions about gender assignment. Is it true, <laughs> Sterling Holloway? <laughs> who? <laughs> you, you know what's not true? Michael Corleone's sons could not become heirs to the now Mafia Empire. Know? I was thinking recently. <laughs> and then he got thrown an ashtray at by, by the Ghostbusters. Now, did you know that uh, my second favorite uh, Dreyfus film is coming back to the theaters in July? Which one is Olsen that? Counts as the third kind. For its, what, 45th anniversary? I think it's the 45th, yeah. Oh, no, 45th of the special edition. Oh, is that what it is? Right. They're going to be showing on the big screen down See, in the Somerville Theater. Is there anything in the special edition they didn't show in the original? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll want uh, extra check footage out. of him going into the they, ship. The, the only oh. the only thing different is <clears throat> there may be a few edits here and there. Yeah. But the only significant was like a thirty second scene of him when he walked up in the mothership and just looks around. Yeah. Oh, nice. Spielberg was forced to do that by the studio. Yeah. But he never wanted it. He never wanted yeah. to see you know the inside. And of the they were ship. all looking down from windows. Like, it was. I mean, you even couldn't even tell there were aliens in yeah. it. So really, the movie's the same yeah. other than that like ten seconds. Such a great movie. I love it. Yeah. I didn't like it as a kid. No, I loved it since the day I saw it. As a kid, 
I didn't I'd appreciate it, yeah. but as an adult, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. It's probably my third favorite Spielberg film. Yeah. Someday I want to go out to Devil's Tower. The first, what well, was my first favorite steel was My first favorite Steven Spielberg film is Raiders of the Lost okay. Ark. Yep. Jaws mm-hmm. is second, Close Encounters is third. Gotcha. Unbelievable. I like it. Quincy, wrap up the show. Well, thank you for, uh, for watching this very uh, exciting episode, and uh, we hope to see you on our next episode. Um, so please drive home carefully. Uh, and remember, we never, never close. close. <laughs> Hashtag me too.